All five classes in Diablo 4 play completely different from each other and you can't change your class mid-game. So I want to help you pick the right one before you invest a lot of time in them. And just a quick heads up, we'll be using footage from various sources in this video, so I'll leave a link to all their videos in the description. If you're planning on playing the game solo for the most part, the Necromancer is probably the best class for you. Because with this class, you have access to a variety of skeletal summons that can help you take aggro, deal damage and just be helpful in general. These can even be upgraded with a variety of buffs after you've unlocked the class special ability Book of the Dead, so you can make them fit your playstyle even better. But that's not the only unique resource the Necromancer has access to, as a lot of your skills also use corpses from slain enemies to fuel your power. You can make them explode or spawn tendrils that stun enemies, and considering how many enemies you'll be killing, there will be no shortage of corpses for you to use. And even if you need to rely on these skills during a tough boss fight where there aren't that many enemies to kill, certain skills give you other means of generating corpses so you can still use them. And of course, the Necromancer fully leans into the fantasy of using bodies as a weapon, as next to using corpses, you have multiple skills that either use blood or bones to deal damage. Some blood skills actually have a chance to spawn a blood orb, which is a healing mechanic unique to the Necromancer. You can even see these different skill types reflected in your masteries, which are at the end of each class's skill tree and really allow you to specialize your build in a specific direction. There is a passive bonus that only works on blood related skills which all have a red skill icon and another one that only works on bone skills with this pale brown icon. So if you want to specialize in one of the two you can really boost their power with these masteries. There's also a mastery that buffs your minions so if you want to focus more on increasing the power of your allies you can make a build that specializes in that. And the necromancer offers a lot of variety in general as it brings a nice variety of close and long range skills. So if you want to be up in the front of combat with your skelly boys, you can make that work, but if you'd rather spread death and disease from far far away, you can totally do that too. Another class that offers a lot of variety is the druid. This one is more focused on the fantasy of using primal magic to summon things like massive earth spikes or thunderstorms. And you can tap into your wild side as well and shapeshift into a werewolf or werebear for some pretty devastating effects. There are also skills that add animal companions to your arsenal, but unlike the Necromancer where it's a class mechanic, you need to unlock individual skills to do this. The Druid also has a pretty interesting unique class mechanic that has to do with various animal spirits, but details on this are a bit vague as we were not able to see it in action yet. The basic idea is that you need to collect offerings that drop from enemies to give to an animal spirit. There will be four different spirits that you can bring these offerings to, all with their own set of four buffs to unlock. And there were some concerns about the Druid as it was definitely on the weaker side during the beta test. But Blizzard themselves have said that it's one of the strongest classes in internal playtesting, and Diablo content creator DM also notes from his experience with the class in the review version that while the Druid is a bit of a slow bloomer, it can definitely become very strong once you level it up and start finding the right gear. The cool thing about the Druid is that it allows you to build into many different archetypes. If you want to be a tanky melee warrior, then you'll mostly focus on werebear skills Skills, but if you're more into fast attacks and big crits, then the druid can totally do that too with some of its werewolf skills. You have mastery talents that reward you for transforming into a werewolf or werebear, and even one that encourages a hybrid playstyle where both forms can give you a different buff, encouraging you to mix up your skills. We can see the same thing with your elemental masteries, with one for earth magic, one for storm, and a hybrid one again. These spells offer you a lot of buffs and debuffs as well, with storm skills offering a lot of ways to debuff enemies with the vulnerable status, increasing their damage taken by 20%. So no matter if you want to tank damage or deal it, or debuff some enemies to make your friends deal more damage, the druid has got you covered with a wide variety of abilities. And if you by the way enjoyed the video so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as well for way more Diablo 4 content like this. And while they might not have power over life and death, or the ability to shapeshift or summon storms, the Barbarian is a class that you definitely shouldn't underestimate. This master of weapons is of course perfect for anyone who wants to stay up close and personal, with the class unique 10% damage reduction passive, making sure you stay alive while doing so. But that's not the only thing that sets the Barbarian apart. You also unlock the weapon expertise system at level 5, which allows you to raise your proficiency with individual weapon types. 
types. So for instance, if you use a lot of one-handed maces, you'll start dealing more damage to stun targets. Or if you're a fan of two-handed axes, they will start doing more damage against targets with the vulnerable status. And while you still have to make some choices on what weapons you want to equip, the Barbarian has the most options out of all classes. That is because it is the only class that can equip four weapons. Most other classes have an offhand slot and a mainhand slot, with both slots being taken if you equip a two-handed weapon. But Barbarians can have two two-handed weapons and two one-handed weapons equipped at the same time. You'll swap between them depending on what skill you are using, but you will receive the bonuses and stats from all equipped weapons. So yeah, there is a lot of endgame potential here as the Barbarian has more gear scaling than any other class. You also have a lot of ways to buff yourself up, with things like Warcry to increase your damage or the class-specific Berserking buff that gives you more damage and movement speed and can be triggered by several abilities from the tree. The one thing I will stress though is that this is a melee class through and through. You have a couple of options to get close to an enemy and a couple to get them closer to you, but there are no real ranged options. There are ways to deal lots of single target damage or take care of multiple enemies at the same time, but you need to stay close to them constantly. So if that does not sound like it's your style, then the Barbarian is probably not for you. But luckily, there's the Sorcerer, which gives you access to a wide variety of spells to rain death upon your enemies. This one definitely has some of the most visually impressive skills, like being able to summon a giant fire snake, a blizzard, or a lightning spear. And this wide variety of spells will not only serve you when you activate them, as the Sorcerer's unique class mechanic enchantments allows you to gain passive buffs from your abilities as well. You'll eventually unlock two slots for this, and you can slot any skill you've unlocked as an enchantment without the need to have the skill slotted as an active ability as well. So this means that your entire skill set doubles as a set of passive bonuses you can choose from with some pretty wild buffs. Some will make the spell in question stronger, like adding a homing capability to your ice shards, but some are just really useful general buffs. I have a feeling the flame shield enchantment is going to be a must-have for a lot of builds as it triggers the spell, which makes you immune to damage when you take a fatal hit. So this system will allow for a lot of variety in build crafting. I think it's definitely one of the most interesting unique class mechanics in the game as well. But you of course have a massive arsenal of spells to cast too, with most spells falling in the three main categories of frost, fire and lightning. There is a lot of synergy between spells from the same damage type, like frost spells triggering additional effects against targets that are already frozen, so it pays off to focus on a particular element. And while you definitely have some defensive options, like barriers or the ability to teleport away, the sorcerer is in many ways the polar opposite of the barbarian. Many of your skills are ranged attacks and while you have some options to keep enemies away, you have to be careful that enemies don't get too close as you will not be able to absorb a lot of hits before you die. Still, it's a very powerful and versatile class thanks to the enchantment system and its huge array of powerful spells. And then finally, there's the sneaky bow and dagger wielding rogue. While they have many tricks up their sleeve, they're mostly focused on dealing large amounts of burst damage and getting out of sticky situations with gadgets like caltrops and smoke bombs. A lot of your skills will either rely on your bow or your blades and like the barbarian, the rogue has a bit of an expanded inventory. You always have a bow and two melee weapons equipped, so again that means an extra potential legendary perk from that extra weapon slot and you switch between weapons depending on what skill you're using. But rogues also have a very interesting unique class mechanic that allows them to pick a specialization to grant them combat buffs. The first one you unlock is called combo points and it synergizes your basic attack skills with your more powerful core skills. You can build up the three combo points by using a basic skill like the homing heart seeker arrow and then spend those points on your next core ability, so increasing the damage and amount of arrows fired from the barrage skill for example. But as you level up, there are two other specializations you can pick up to completely change your playstyle. Another example is inner sight, which will mark a random enemy that when attacked will fill up an energy meter. Once the meter is full, you will have a four second window where you have unlimited energy to use any of your skills. And finally, there's preparation, which will reset all your cooldowns when you use your ultimate ability. So whether it's through building combo points or inner sight, the rogue is great at stacking up buffs and unleashing their skills at the right moment for maximum damage. They also have a unique set of skills in their skill tree called imbuements that really help with this. Effectively, this is an effect you prepare that will trigger on the next two skills you use. You can either imbue your weapon with poison, ice, or shadow damage, so while it is no sorcerer or druid, the rogue has access to some elemental damage 
damage as well. But the main point of these is of course to pop an imbuement right before you use your most powerful attack to deal even more damage. So if you like the idea of stacking all these different buffs for one massive hit, and if the variety of switching between quick blades and ranged bow shots sounds like fun, then the Rogue is definitely the class for you. Let us know what class you'll be playing when the game releases, and of course subscribe to not miss any of our Diablo 4 tips and tricks. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and if our next one on the game is already up, you can watch it by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.